By far one of the biggest concerns entrepreneurs have when it comes to delegating and getting an assistant is releasing control and trusting the other person. I felt the exact same way. And you know what? I think one of the craziest things you can ever do in business is take blind risk. So in the next few minutes, let's talk about how can we take this risk of delegating from feeling like a huge Grand Canyon to maybe shrinking it down to being just a pool and then maybe even something as small as a sidewalk crack. Still some risk there. You can trip on the crack and skin your knee, but at least it's a lot more manageable than some big, big, big risk. When I got my current assistant four or five years ago, I realized there was a number of steps that I could take to really manage the risk of the situation. In the very beginning, I was really nervous. I thought, how can I afford a North American assistant? What if I don't have enough work for her? What if I don't like her, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I was able to solve a lot of those problems simply by offering only a short-term position in the first place. So I actually said this would be just a 30-day trial. Secondly, I limited the number of hours that I promised to her. In the beginning, I said, it's only gonna be five to 10 hours a week. Maybe we'll grow in the future, but I'm gonna stick with five to 10 hours a week in the beginning. And I also made sure that I did a number of work tests with her right off the bat so that I could actually see her working rather than trying to guess through interviews and whatnot. And that helped to start bringing down that risk from Grand Canyon to pool. Now, once we were up and running, there's even more that I did. So first of all, I didn't assign her any critical tasks that would sink the business if she screwed it up. I also stuck to tasks that were really simple to teach and also simple for her to learn. And by kind of leaving room for error there and getting her some early wins and frankly me some early wins too, it made all the difference in the world. Now, as we've moved on, she's gained more and more confidence and I've gained more and more trust in her she has been taking bigger and bigger pieces off my plate. And now we're at a point, four to five years later now, that she does have my credit card and she does make some lower level financial decisions with some limits in place, of course. And she does now handle a number of sensitive documents, including working with our accountants and bookkeepers and whatnot on my behalf. When I think about managing that risk though, it all came down to some very simple stuff in the very, very beginning. Right off the bat, as Sarah and I were gaining more and more momentum together, I had her every day submit a daily report to me. Instead of me having to be the one to chase her down, she would be the one that would report into me, which was a huge time saver. I would have her answer the same questions every single day. Number one, what did you do today? And I didn't ask her to go into any great detail, just bullet point. Secondly, I asked her where she hit any roadblocks and bottlenecks so I could jump in and help her immediately rather than us going weeks of her suffering silently. Thirdly, how can I help you today? And sometimes that would be a little bit different than her roadblocks and bottlenecks. For example, if she's curious to know, are we taking Thanksgiving off? Are we taking the holidays off? It really gave her that opportunity to speak up. Fourth is, what are you hoping to do tomorrow? And that would give me clarity into where her head was at so I could help correct it right away if in fact she was going down the wrong path. And lastly, did you log your time today? It's a heck of a lot easier for your teammate to submit their hours to you at the end of the two weeks or the end of the month if they do it on a regular basis. That daily report Sarah sent to me every day, it must have been for the first two or three years of us working together. We don't use it anymore, but I'll tell you all of our team members in the very beginning do use it. Now on an ongoing basis, we also have a weekly meeting. And Sarah and I, to this day, still use the weekly meeting. We'll look at what kind of issues have come up and seeing as she's handling my email inbox, she can ask me about any emails that she's not sure how to handle. And we also take a look forward to the coming week or two at the calendar to see if there's any questions that are coming up. And I can kind of look over her shoulder a little bit as she's making scheduling decisions as well. My final tip to help reduce risk is to use a tool called 360 Delegation, which I've talked about here in this Forbes series. 360 Delegation is simply being clear about your vision, resources, and definition of done. So really you're delegating in a really complete way right from the first moment that you're passing something on to your teammate. And for me that really helped reduce risk because as I took the time to think through the task and be really clear about the challenge at hand and what success looked like, it gave me the sense of confidence that what I was handing off to my teammate was clear and complete. There's a great quote from a General Motors engineer. 
he says, a problem well-defined is half solved. And so by me doing a better job of defining the task in the first place gave me the peace of mind knowing that my teammate would in fact be working from complete information. So whether it's picking a task in the first place, which is simple to teach, simple to, to learn, whether it's using 360 delegation or starting your teammate on just a few hours a week in the very beginning, you can see there's so many different ways that you can manage risk. So you can go from some kind of terrifying, vague Grand Canyon down to just a crack in the sidewalk that is way easier to overcome. So there you go. Hopefully those are some really powerful ideas to help you to minimize risk so that you can feel better about releasing control to an assistant and gaining confidence in them so that you can get ahead in business. Thank you so much.